So we're looking at ratio and root tests. Uh, I think only one of these is on the AP exam, but it's one of, um, but I forget which one isn't on the AP exam. Uh, but both are really great, so we're going to do both because it's amazing. Uh, so we have a ratio test and some examples for that, uh, the root test, some guidelines. Uh, we're going to look at a summary chart that's from the textbook. Um, so if you haven't copied that down, then I recommend that you do so. And then we're going to look at one polynomial. Let's get started. So the ratio test looks at a ratio. Wild. Um, but what we look at is um, we have the ratio of the next term over the current term. And it's like an arbitrary next term. Um, and then we're looking at the limit of the absolute value of that. So the signs, now we like just don't care about them. Signs don't matter. Um, and if we have the limit is a number that's between 0 and 1, the limit of our ratio is um, between 0 and 1, then we have a series that converges absolutely. So it's no longer like kind of... Um, is it like is it a conditional convergence or is it a is it a um, absolute convergence? We are guaranteed with the ratio test that if our ratio of our next term over our current term's limit as that goes to infinity is between zero and one, and that makes sense, right? It's something that's that shows that it's getting smaller. Um, then our series converges absolutely. But if we get a number that's greater than one, then you know that means that the things that we're putting in, like the, the next term is greater than the previous term um, by something that is bigger than 1, then we're going to have a divergent series. Because, like, it, if you think about it, it's just like, well, 1, like if you're adding, if you have something over something else, the numerator is bigger, then, and that, that's going to give you a number that's bigger than 1, that means that your numerator is bigger than your denominator by a goodly amount. Uh, so you're going to have a divergent series. If we have this limit is a number and that number is 1, then we need to figure out uh, another strategy to, to determine what our series is doing, uh, if we have a convergence or a divergent series. Uh, so that's an inconclusive. If our number for this limit of our ratio of our next term over our current term, which is why this is over, um, then we get that one that's not going to give us really any information. Um, so think about how you can prove this, and you're proving this in your group. Um, it's helpful to think about how uh, we can like set up a number uh, and then end up with that number being re that ratio kind of thing. Um, being repeated multiplied, which gives us more of a geometric series, if you think about it. So when does our geometric series converge? And that'll be, that's your hint for how to prove this. All right, so let's use the ratio test. Uh, so we need to look at the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of our current or of our next term so 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial over our current term which is 2 to the n over n factorial and um, so that's like a that's a very um, complicated fraction but uh, students in the past have uh, enjoyed writing this rather as uh, multiplying by the reciprocal so we have 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial times the reciprocal of our denominator. So we have an n factorial over a 2 to the n. Now, what happens here? Well, 2 uh, to the n plus 1, that's 2 to the n times 2, right? So that means that this n plus 1 uh, is going to cancel out. So we're just left with a 2 when we cancel there. And then n plus 1 factorial is equal to n plus 1 times n factorial, right? So then the n factorial and the factorial on that cancel out. So what are we left with? We're left with limit as n approaches infinity of absolute value of 2 uh, over n plus 1. Now what happens here? Well, 
Our numerator is 2, our denominator is n plus 1, so as n goes to infinity, that gives us 0, which is less than 1. Therefore, this converges. Absolutely. By what test? The ratio test. So how about these? What do we do? Well, it says use the ratio test, so I guess we should use the ratio test. So try on your own to set this up and then um, see if we agree. So we have limit for A. I'll do A in um, ocean. We have the limit as n approaches infinity of uh, absolute value of n plus 1 squared times 2 to the n plus 2 over 3 to the n plus 1 times, and now I'm going to do um, just multiply by the reciprocal. It's the same as dividing, so we have 3 to the n over n squared times 2 to the n plus 1. Okay, and so what happens here? Well, we have 2 to the n plus 2. Oh, it's, uh, I can't see too much of that. So we just cancel out all of that, but then that cancels with this. 3 to the n and this n plus 1, that cancels out, so we're just left with a 3 in the denominator. And so what do we have now? We have the limit as n approaches infinity, the absolute value of um, 2 times n plus 1 squared over 3 times n squared. Oh, I guess I don't need parentheses there. Now, what do you notice? It was the same degree in our numerator and denominator. So we can think back to the first unit of when we have this, the polynomial um, with the same degree, then we just look at the ratio of our leading coefficients. Or we can be fancy and do L'Hopital's rule um, and get the same result. All right, because when we multiply by, like we're going to end up by multiplying by two factorial in the numerator and denominator, so they cancel out using our power rule. And so then we end up with two thirds. Two thirds is less than one. So we have absolute convergence. Huzzah. All right, let's try B. Let me sneak over here. So for B, we were doing this in, in lava. Um, what do we have? We have a limit. As n approaches infinity, uh, the absolute value of n plus 1 to the n plus 1 all over n plus 1 factorial times n factorial over n to the n power. Okay, now what happens here? Well, n factorial and n plus 1 factorial, the factorial, that gets rid of the factorial part on that n plus 1. And so what are we left with? Well, we're left with this limit um, as let's see, this equals limit as n approaches infinity of, um, oh, and then this is an n plus 1 and then this plus 1. Those can cancel out, right? So then we're left with n plus 1 to the n power divided by n to the n power. And now we have the same exponent. So we have that's equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of um, n plus 1 over n to the n power. Now if you look at that, think about how we can maybe rewrite that as something a little more familiar. Sneak on over a little bit more. Okay, so what is this limit as n approaches infinity of absolute value of n over n is 1 plus 1 over n is 1 over n. And then we're doing that to the n power. Does that look like e? It sure does. e, which is what, 2.718 stuff, um, which is greater than 1, therefore... Our series, our infinite series, this one, diverges. Woo! So let's try this one, uh, and it says it's a failure, so um, I'm anticipating us failing using the ratio test. We'll probably need to use alternating series test, most likely. Let's try. Limit. As n approaches infinity, absolute value 
uh, and then I'm just going to ignore this negative one and its bad form, but um, I'm just going to do that. So root n plus 1 over n plus 2 times n plus 1 over root n. And what happens here? Well, we actually end up with um, the... Uh, we have like n to the same power in the numerator and denominator, so we're going to get this equal to the ratio of our leading coefficients, which is 1. Uh, so then that is inconclusive by the ratio test. So, um, as we alluded to before, let's try the alternating series test. Uh, so what happens with alternating series? Um, do we have the limit as n approaches infinity of root n over n plus 1 equal to 0? Uh, yes, right, because we have... Um, because I mean, we can use L'Hopital's rule, um, you can also think about just what is happening to root n and how, um, how that's not going to grow as fast as uh, n is going to. Let's just think about their behavior. But like, yeah, the slope, so L'Hopital's rule works. Uh, so we get zero. Uh, that's good. And then uh, if we write out some terms, make sure that, uh, all of, that we have a, uh, a monotonic decreasing. So we got 1 over... 1 plus 1, so what's that? 1 over 2. And then we have root 2 over 3, uh, root 2 over 3, and that's smaller, okay. And then root 3 over 4, again, smaller, okay. So we do have conditional convergence. Uh, we do have convergence by the alternating series test. And um, does the does our absolute value of this one converge though? Because if we think about like the maybe uh, limit comparison um, or direct comparison, then uh, then the absolute value of this, right, the absolute value of negative one to the n root n over n plus one, these terms. These are going to be, um, let's do limit comparison. So we got limit as n approaches infinity of, um, let's say, root n over n plus 1 and 1 over root n. So what's happening here? Uh, because we know that 1 over root n diverges. So what do we get? We get one over limit as n approaches infinity of n over n plus 1, and that's 1. So this is a number. It's a finite positive number. And so uh, we know that these two have the same behavior. Uh, this this has the same behavior as uh, 1 over root n, which is a p-series and diverges. Therefore, we have uh, conditionally conditional convergence. Um, and the conditional convergence we found because of the limit comparison test, where we took another series that we knew what happens to it, and then we looked at the ratio of those for the limit as that goes to infinity, and if we get a finite positive number, then we know that those two series have the same behavior. Conditional conversions. Wow, that was so many tests. That was really fun. So the root test um, is taking the nth root and looking the limit, looking at the limit as n goes to infinity of that. And then uh, with our number that we are getting from our nth root as the limit goes to infinity, uh, we can say pretty much the same things um, based on that number uh, as the ratio test, where if we have that number is between 0 and 1, then we have a absolute convergence. If we have that number is greater than 1, that means that our series diverges. We don't get a number from adding up all those terms. 
And if we have our, our number is equal to one, then we don't know. So um, this is uh, well, it was very exciting. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, if you think about the geometric series, that makes a lot. This lot makes a lot of sense, right? Um, and that's uh, once again might be useful. So um, right, because geometric series is where you have a r to the n power. And so if you're taking the nth root of this, um, as that goes to infinity, then you're just busting this r out of um, of the exponent. And so, you know, when we have our our r is between 0 and 1, or absolute value of that is less as between 0 and 1, then we have a convergence for a geometric series. And then when r is 1 or greater, then um, we have divergence. But when r equals 1, um, or when... Uh, when, when this equals 1, then it's inconclusive, and you've got to think about why. Try to come up with some examples. So let's use the root test. Um, and so we need the limit as n approaches infinity of um, the nth root of 1 over n to the n. And so what happens here? Well, we end up with this is going to be the limit as n approaches infinity of, like, uh root the nth root of 1 over the nth root of n to the n. And so what's that? Limit as n approaches infinity. Well, the nth root of 1, 1 doesn't change. It's just 1. And then we have this is n. And so that's 0. Thus, the series converges absolutely. Because that's less than 1. So some general guidelines for figuring out uh, convergence or divergence. First, do the nth term test. Does your nth term go to uh, zero? If not, then you know that your series diverges. Uh, and then think about, like, is it any of our special things? Or is it geometric? Because then we know exactly what's happening. P-series, we also know what's going to happen. Telescoping or alternating. And remember, telescoping sneakily is... Uh, a lot of partial fraction decomposition and writing out some terms. Um, I guess uh, between some somewhere in between here, you should uh, do what? You should write out terms. What should you do? Write out terms. Write out terms. It's really helpful, and it will be helpful for the next. Um, next things that we do as well. And then think about, can we use the integral test? Remember, that's our improper integral, but it, there's some conditions on that. Uh, can we use the root test, the ratio test? And um, can we use any of our comparisons? Can we think about like any of our special series that we like rely, rely on a lot to um, determine convergence or divergence? Uh, your harmonic series is a pretty good uh, strategy for that. And, um, and that we can use our our limit comparison and our direct comparison tests. Um, this is uh, is more like guidelines, is not like actual rules. Um, so you know that's uh, that's why uh, this is there. Um, uh -huh, it's the ocean. I'm using the ocean pen. All right. And then think about how you're going to make a flow chart for this, uh, and you're also gonna be making a flow chart for uh, integral techniques. So uh, get ready for that. All right. So. Um, pause the video and think about how to uh, evaluate some of these and then um, and then I'll just uh, I'll just I guess tell you which ones converge or diverge all right so pause the video work on these I zoomed in so you could see them better but still pause the video and work on these all right so this one that one diverges by the nth term test, right? Diverges. Uh, B, pi over 6 is geometric. Uh, pi over 6 is less than 1, so this is converging. Because it's geometric. Uh, C, that's uh, do the integral test. And uh, this will converge. Using the integral test, and that's a really easy substitution, too. This is, um, it looks harmonic, 
This one looks like our harmonic series. Um, we know harmonic series diverge. But uh, you could also use limit comparison uh, or direct comparison. This diverges. This is an alternating series. Uh, it's harmonic, but it's alternating harmonic series. And alternating harmonic series converge. We got n factorial over 10 to the n. That seems like you should probably use the um, the ratio test. And uh, ratio test will give us uh, something that works, right? Uh, we'll n plus 1 um, over 10. And then we have an n in our numerator, so limit. And then approach infinity of that is not a number, so this diverges. And then this one, we should probably use the root test because we have it to the nth power. Uh, and so we'll end up with one half, so that converges. Uh, absolutely. By the root test. So here's a really helpful chart. Um, it's in your book. Strongly recommend that you write it down. Um, the act of actually copying it down rather than taking screenshots of things really does help you remember. Um, I would also, like if I'm studying for the AP exam, I would probably make flashcards or like make, start making like a, like a crip sheet, like a, um, a summary sheet that has like everything that we've learned. Um, I think that that would be, a, this would be worthy of going on to that. Um, but remember we have just uh, the nth term test. Uh, we have geometric and p-series. Uh, don't get these confused, though, because just think about where the n is. Um, the comparison test, direct comparison test, the limit comparison test, and those are both very useful, but you need to come up with your own uh, series in order to compare it so that you get more information. Uh, integral test uses improper integrals and probably a lot of L'Hopital's rule. Alternating series is when you have alternating awkward middle school dancing and... Um, that will only work with alternating series where each term can be written as positive or negative. Um, so if you have like repetition in your positives and negatives, it doesn't work. The alternating series test doesn't work. Uh, the ratio test and root test, uh, those we just learned today. And these are super useful when you have things like factorials or um, n to the nth powers, things like that. Ratio and root test are really, really helpful. Uh, but these also require looking at geometry, or not geometry, algebra, and being able to um, keep track of your numerators and denominators really well. Okay. So that's, that's from the book, Table 5.3. Alright, last thing um, is just let's find a first degree polynomial approximation for a function e to the x. Uh, what is a first degree polynomial approximation? It's a line. So we're basically doing that linearization thing that we did before. Um, but we're just doing it for this particular function e to the x. So what do we need for a line? Well, we need a point, and we need a slope. Uh, the point we can find, because uh, we're looking for the value and the slope to agree with the value and the slope of f at x equals 0. So we know that f of 0 is e to the 0, which is 1. So we have the point 0, 1, and then we know our slope, because we know our derivative, so f prime of x is e to the x, so f prime at 0 is e to the 0, which is 1. So our slope is 1. So we have y uh, minus 1 equals x, also known as y equals x plus 1. This is our first degree polynomial function, p sub 1. So I guess we should write that p sub 1 of x equals 1 plus x. Um, why are we doing that? Well, we are going to, with our, armed with our understanding of what uh, we can do with infinite series, we can now make polynomials. And we can construct these terms of our polynomials and it'll be super useful. It's really exciting. And um, this is what we're doing next really is um, like, this comes up in so many other classes that you will take in math. Um, like, uh,
polynomial approximations because this is how computers deal with uh, math, um, especially you know our transcendental functions like e to the x sine and cosine. And this is how you know we. Uh, this is how how we as a society have been able to uh, to to do things like you know put people on the moon and and stuff like that. So uh, this is very very exciting and um, comes up a whole lot. Uh, e to the x sine x sine of x and cosine of x are are um, those are what we're going to be dealing with a lot, and it's uh, it's going to be really great. I'm excited. All right, bye.